Hey, 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 this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you all. I want to welcome you to Wednesday night virtual Bible study. Like the broadcast, share the broadcast, comment on the broadcast uh, so that we'll know that we are helping to reach a generation with the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you've got prayer requests tonight, go ahead and drop those down in the comment section or text us at 210-516-2412 so that we can enter into prayer with each of you. Amen. 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 God bless you and keep you is our consistent prayer. Amen. Let's see who we have with us so far tonight. All right. Amen. Let's get over here and see. Amen. Whether you're joining us by Facebook or YouTube, we hope that you will become one of our subscribers if you're on YouTube and follow us if you are on Facebook so that you'll know when we go live with all of our content. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord for this wonderful worshipful Wednesday. And I pray that God is blessing each of you even in wonderful this moment. Wednesday. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's see. Good to see you tonight, Sister Michelle, Sister King. Amen. Praying for Tiffany and Shanna and Maynard, Eddie Lee, the Johnson family. Let's continue to lift them up in prayer. And then there may be others who are on your prayer list. Uh, you can shoot those to us in the comment section now. Or if you so desire, you can also... You can also share those with us by texting 210-516-2412, and we will add them to our Wednesday prayer. Our Wednesday prayer is every Wednesday morning at 6.30 a.m. We're live, and we thank God for our prayer warriors who connect us to God every week. I know you can do it on your own, but it's so much better when you've got others who are believing God with you. Good to see you tonight, Sister Diane, and all of those who are watching us by way of our YouTube uh, channel. Amen. Praying for all of those families that God is asking and uh, desiring uh, to hear from. So let's get into uh, this prayer, and I hope and pray that you have been blessed. Praying for the whole family, Cordoza family, uh, that God will continue to shed his uh, grace on each of us. Amen. Come on, let's begin now to get into prayer so we can get into the word of God. Lord, we thank you for this day, for this is the day that you've made, and we are rejoicing and we're glad in it. We pray now, Father, for every name that has been rendered to us on tonight, God. Also want to add Sister Eileen McKinnon, God. Touch her in a mighty special way, Lord. You know exactly what she stands in need of in this moment, Lord. We thank you for the Thomas family, God. We pray your continued blessings over them, the Lewis family, Lord, and uh, the, the, the Williamson family, God. Continue to allow your grace to reign supreme over our lives, Lord. We pray safe passage for Sister Stark. Lord, as she travels back home, God, we are just continuing to edify your name, knowing that you're able to do all things and you do all things well. Be with us now, Lord, as we go before you uh, tonight to discover what change looks like in our lives, God, when we are totally submitted to you. Have your way, God. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus and all of his children said, amen, amen, and Amen. Good to see you tonight, Elder Taylor. We pray God's blessings upon you. I want to thank everyone for a wonderful Sunday morning experience. Uh, Elder Kevin Green came and shared with us in such a mighty way. I want to thank uh, our media team for all that they do in connecting us um, through the technology that God has afforded us to, to meet the needs of our people where they are. But I want to let you know that there's nothing like being in the house. And so we are looking forward 
uh, to sharing with you on this Sunday as we continue to lift up the name of the Lord. And then after our August break uh, in Bible study, uh, we won't have Bible study in August, but when we come back together in September, we will be back in the house on Wednesday night so that we can gain from each other uh, uh, in the spirit uh, of fellowship. And so we're looking forward to that as well. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Sister Dot, good to see you tonight. And uh, we're praying for God's continued success in each of our lives. Listen, you've got your Bible. I hope you do. I pray you do. Uh, let's get into the word of God on tonight. We are continuing in our study, uh, dealing with change, 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 change. Procuring, procuring change in our lives, securing change in our lives, um, making change such a, oh God, a, a tangible piece of our lives uh, that we have to look back and wonder what took us so long to get here. <laughs> God wants us to live in that type of reality uh, where we can see the difference that he is making, a drastic, dramatic difference from where we are now, where we want to be, and ultimately what God desires. And so I want to continue on as we look at uh, this prayer uh, tonight. Um, as we look at change tonight, I want to uh, start and tell us that in order to have change in our lives, we looked at many areas of how we get change. Tonight, I want to look at change uh, happening through regular prayer. Last week, we talked about developing a plan of action, and I hope that some of you wrote those things down about um, the change that you desired, what you were going to do to get there, and then some of the things that would come up against you that would cause you to not stick with it. I hope that you all did that. That was good homework. Uh, you were supposed to write down what change you wanted, and then write down how you would get there, but then you were also supposed to write down what you knew would come up against you that would make you want to stop the change. So I hope you did that homework. And tonight I want to deal with uh, understanding that in order to get the change that we desire in our lives, we've also got to become regular prayer warriors. We've got to become regular prayer warriors. We, you know, uh, oftentimes we hear the folks say, listen, I call the prayer warrior because I knew that that's what they do. They've got a gifting to pray. They go before God and uh, they have a prayer communication with God. They've got a prayer life. They, they, they've got a relationship with God as evidence through their communicating with him through the medium of prayer or the discipline of prayer. And, and so uh, I wanna suggest to us tonight that God is saying, if you're going to have change in your life, yes, you need the prayer warrior, or yes, thank God for the prayer warrior, but really what you need is a regular life of prayer. Uh, we've heard it said that if you do something for 21 days consistently, it will become a habit. And so uh, I want to suggest that if we will indeed see the value of prayer as it relates to uh, creating change in our lives and manifesting uh, deep change in our lives, we'll recognize how important a part that prayer plays. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so let's look at this tonight. And I want to look at prayer in two essential areas tonight when we start talking about how to get change in our lives through the discipline of prayer. Come on, let the church say prayer is a discipline. Prayer is a discipline. Pr prayer is something that I discipline myself to do. Yeah, the discipline. They've got a, the, the discipline of uh, uh, meditation, the discipline, which, which really means that it is a practice, but is a practice so uh, in, in, uh, entrenched in us that it becomes a discipline because we recognize the power thereof. And so I want to suggest tonight that regular prayer is a discipline that will help you to get to the change that you desire when you've mapped out a roadmap that says where you want to go, um, uh, 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 what are the benefits of getting there, what will come up against me so I won't get there. Uh, prayer will help you through every one of these areas. Prayer will help you. Prayer will help you. And so tonight I want to look at two essential ways in which prayer helps. Uh, number one, I want to suggest to us that a child of God must pray for forgiveness if we are to indeed see change in our lives. We've got to pray for forgiveness. We've got to pray for forgiveness if we are to see change in our lives. You got your Bible, don't you? 
Uh, let's go to Mark, and we're going to look first at uh, chapter 16, verse number 16. Come on, chapter 16, uh, verse number 16. Um, uh, is, that, is that where I want to be? Yeah, that's where I want to No, matter of fact, I want to be in Mark. Mark 16, verse 16. Mark 16, verse 16. Look at what he says. Uh, he says, uh, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And so first thing, when we start looking at um, this praying regularly, we've got to recognize that a person who's not a child of God needs to believe in Jesus and repent and confess their, their sins, repent of their sins, confess Christ, and be baptized to be forgiven of their sins. And so uh, we're starting off tonight talking about change, but then we've got to also uh, recognize that some people have not had change in their lives because they've not believed in God through Jesus Christ. And so I want to first encourage those of you uh, who are, have been looking for ways, 10 steps, five steps, eight steps, uh, you've been looking to to get change in your lives, but you've not done it through Christ Jesus. That's the first thing I want to tell you is that in order to have real change in your life, you need Christ because I am radically a different person now that I have Christ than I was when I didn't have Christ. Now, I'm not the best, but I'm better than where I was and I'm saved. <laughs> And I'm still growing. I'm still pressing because I'm in God. And I recognize with this relationship that I have with God, it causes me to press to do better every day. I'm looking for progress. I'll never reach perfection. It's only in Christ that I will be perfected. But but I can have progress every day to live better in Christ Jesus. And so I want to first invite those of you who may be viewing us tonight and you've not made Christ the head of your life, but you're looking for some type of change. You're looking for change in your 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 life, uh, change in your living, change in your attitude, change uh, in, in your demonstration of personhood. I want to suggest that you first got to believe in Christ Jesus. And that's why uh, Mark tells us in Mark 16 and 16, he says, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. He's telling us that in order to have change in your life, you've got to first believe in God. And I need to tell you that tonight. Uh, change requires total change. I'll say it again. Change requires total change. Remember last week, I told you that when God is pulling you to something, he's pulling you away from something else. And so the non-believer needs to believe. The non-believer needs to believe. And the believer needs to be faithful. Come on, y'all. If we're going to have real change in our lives, we've got to believe, we've got to repent, we've got to confess, we've got to be baptized in order to be changed, in order to be saved. And, and so that's the first place I need to tell someone who may be uh, in this room tonight, in this uh, virtual atmosphere, uh, you're looking for change, you, you've tried everything else, but you've not tried Jesus yet. Uh, you've got to give God uh, the opportunity to work through your life. And the way that you do that is by believing in Christ Jesus. So that's Mark 16 and 16. And so we've got to pray for forgiveness. We've got to pray for forgiveness. We've got to confess our sins. Uh, Romans 10 and 9. Go with me to Romans 10 and 9. 10 and 9. I just, uh, we want to look at this. Uh, as we start looking at change, and we're going to be talking about prayer. We're talking about prayer tonight, but we've got to we've got to set uh, we've got to set a couple of points in place um, for those who may be in a place where you've not yet believed on the Lord Jesus. Uh, Romans ten and nine. He says, "If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved." For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess your faith and are saved. So uh, what, what he's telling us here is that we've got to repent. We've got to confess. And so uh, when we start talking about living a changed life, what we're talking about now is confessing our sins. And this will go across the board, whether you're saved or not. We're still talking about praying prayers of forgiveness tonight as a way to 
uh, receive the change that we desire in our life. So this is universal uh, to, to those who are new to the faith and those of us who are already in the faith. If we're to have change, we've got to repent. We've got to uh, be convicted. And that's what, when we look at Romans 10 and 9, we recognize what he's saying is if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. You've got to have a deep conviction. You've got to have a deep conviction uh, of who God is in your life if you are to see lasting change in your life. See, the fact of the matter is that the demons know who God is, but they're not convicted enough to change their lives. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, but, but those of us who know him, those of us who desire to have change through him, we not only have to know him in our heads, but we've got to know him in our hearts. We've got to not only acknowledge that, that, that Jesus is Lord, but we've got to make him the Lord over our lives. And when you begin to make the, uh, Jesus the Lord over your life, that's when you begin to see uh, change come in, drastic change, change that will manifest itself in every area of your life. And so uh, when you look at uh, uh, verse number 10, he says, um, he says, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Uh, the Greek word means uh, when we talk about confession, the Greek word there means to say the same thing. It means to agree with. And so uh, what, what Paul is telling us here is that we must agree with uh, the Father that Jesus is Lord and he's Lord over our lives if you're going to have that kind of change. Come on, y'all. He says confession. That Greek word means it means to say the same thing. I like that because uh, when I start talking about confession, and we talk about confession all the time, um, but we talk about confession, uh, some instances as it relates to uh, saying what we've done wrong and trying to make it right. But even here, I want to suggest that when we start talking about confession here, we're, we're not only talking about um, uh, confessing what we've done wrong, but we're talking about confessing uh, who the Lord Jesus is. And if we can confess his power in our lives, then we'll begin to have the lasting change that he desires for our existence. So we're not only talking to them who have yet to be saved, but I'm talking to you believers who are looking for lasting change. Listen, you've got to begin to confess uh, your shortcomings, your shortfalls, your, your struggles, so that God can and will recognize that you've had a deep conviction, something has happened in your heart and you really want to see the change. I hope you're listening to me tonight. Uh, I know I'm moving through it rather quickly, but, but I, I, I really want you to get this thing that God is telling us that it is through our prayer, it is through our prayer life, through the discipline of our prayer, through lining our prayers up with the word of God, with lining our prayers up to uh, with, 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 with the mandate and the call of, that he has over our lives. Yeah, uh, when, when you know you've been called to something, when you know that God has made you for something, then you line your life up in a certain way where you recognize that this is where I must be. This is how I must walk. This is what I must confess in order to to meet the purpose of my life. And God is saying, this is what I want you to get down in your spirit. Who you are, whose you are, where you are, where you're going, what your purpose is, what you will and will not do. And then I want you to begin to pray those prayers. I want you to begin to pray the kind of prayer that gives you power because you recognize who you are in him. And part of those prayers is asking God to forgive you for what you've done in the past. Uh, yeah, what you're thinking about doing in the future so that you can move in holiness, move in righteousness uh, to the desired place that he has for your life, that change life. Come on, somebody ought to tell the Lord, I really do want change. I really do want to change my, my trajectory in life. I do want to change um, the way I speak. I do want to change the way I think. I want to change the way I feel. Uh, and I'm going to do it through the, uh, the discipline of prayer. He says, we've got a prayer. Now, the fact of the matter is, again, I tell you that we've got to make sure that when we pray, when we ask for forgiveness, that we're doing it with the right heart. Go with me to Acts, and let's look at Acts uh, 8 and 22. Let's look at Acts 8 and 22. I'm talking about prayer as a means to change tonight. 
Acts 8 and 22. And I'm telling you that you've got to have your heart right when you pray um, to get the kind of power that you need uh, from the Lord. Look at 8 uh, and 22 in the book of Acts. Look what he says. He says, repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord in the hope that he may forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. Now, remember, this is Simon the sorcerer, and he sees the apostles working um, uh, in, in a miraculous way. And he says, listen, uh, that kind of power that you all have, I need to buy some of that power. And he gets rebuked by, by, by the apostles and tells him, listen, uh, you're looking for God for the wrong thing. You're looking for God for self-aggrandizement. You're looking uh, for the power of God to be in your life so that you could be looked upon with a certain light. But what we do, we do with uh, the hopes of turning the light on him, not on us. And so he says, well, okay, well, uh, and, and, so, uh, and so he says to him, he says, uh, Peter tells him, listen, uh, you need to pray because with that kind of spirit, something bad is going to happen to you. And so Simon the sorcerer says, well, I tell you what, pray, pray for me. Pray that, I, that, that nothing you've said will happen towards me. See, he wasn't praying um, for a, a changed heart. He wasn't change, ch uh, praying out of sincerity. He wasn't praying because he heard the truth of God's word. He was praying to escape the consequences of his actions. And God is telling us tonight that in order for you to have the kind of change that you desire, the kind of change that you've been hoping for, the kind of change that you know that you need in your life uh, to make your life more stable, to make your life uh, more reflective of the light that he's placed in you, uh, you've got to pray to him with the right motive. You can't pray to God because you're trying to get out of the consequences. Come on, all of us have done it at one time or another. Uh, we've done some things, we've said some things, and then we realize how wrong we've been and we recognize that there's consequences for our action. And so we say, Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll never do it again. We don't really want to leave it alone. We just don't want to have to go through the consequences. And God is saying, no, if you want change, change that will last, change uh, that will show how much in love you are with me. You've got to pray with a real heart that says, I'm not only uh, sorry for what I did this time, I don't want to do it anymore. And when you do that, yeah, when you do that, God will begin to change your heart uh, because your mind has changed. And now he'll begin to see uh, your spirit man rise up and live out the true call and purpose that he has for you. And so we thank God that he's calling us to an active life of change, uh, whether it be spiritual, emotional, uh, physical change, whatever it is, that thing that has brought us down beneath the uh, spiritual mandate that God has called us into, um, he said, if you're going to do it, you've got to do it through a natural, healthy, holy, righteous, true prayer life, through a true prayer life. And, um, and so God is calling us to pray for forgiveness. We've got to pray for forgiveness, but then we've also got to pray for God's help. We've got to pray for God's help to help us change. We got to pray that God would help us to change. Go with me to Matthew. Go with me to Matthew 6 and 13. Matthew 6 and 13. Matthew 6 and 13. Talking about change tonight. You know what change you need. Uh-huh. Change. He says in Matthew 6 and 13, he says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, or your Bible may say it, from the evil one. So when we start looking at change, we've got to ask God to do something for us. We've got to ask God to deliver us from evil. <laughs> deliver us from evil, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, Jesus doesn't tempt us. God doesn't tempt us. But what happens is we still may be subject to the trials that expose us to Satan. 
There's some trials that you may have that will expose you to Satan. There's some things that you'll go through that 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 their trials, their trials, uh, and 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 our faith is being encouraged in them. But we will also wind up coming against Satan. Jesus tells Peter, uh, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. And he says, but after you come forward, yes, Lord, strengthen your brothers. So there's some stuff that we're going to go through. And Satan is going to try us while we're going through. But the fact of the matter is that God will always make a way for us to escape. And so that's why we've got to pray. And so look at what his prayer is. His prayer is deliver us from evil. He says, deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's got to be our prayer. If we're looking to change, you, you know that thing that you wrote down and you said, I want to change this. Then you've got to go back and say, okay, now why have I not been able to get the change that I desire? And, and when you see why you've not been able to get the change, then you've got to you got to write down something and say, wait a minute, I need to be delivered from this evil that keeps me from doing what I would. Paul said, when I would to do good, that I do not do. And when I don't want to do evil, or I don't want to, what I don't want to do, I find myself doing it. I've got these two laws at work within me. And so we've got to begin to ask God to help deliver us from temptation and lead us not yeah, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And we've got to recognize when we're moving in those areas. And we can do that when we've got a spirit of discernment. And our spirit of discernment happens when we are committed to prayer, when we're committed to prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. You all know that one very well. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. Look what he says. Two words. Pray continually. Some of your Bibles may have three words. Pray without ceasing. It says pray continually. He says pray persistently. Uh, in other words, what he's saying, he's not saying that you get, you're going to be on a 24-hour prayer fast every single day. No, what he's saying is that you're going to regularly pray. And then I guess I got to ask the question, how often are you praying? Are you praying daily? Are you praying Are you praying uh, a few times a day? Uh, you've got to be a person who continually prays if you are to see change in your life. It is through our constant communication. If, if you work on a job right now, uh, and maybe you're working remotely, in order to get that job done correctly, uh, even though you're dealing with the customer uh, remotely from your office, a few times a day, you're talking to a supervisor, you're talking to a coworker, you're talking to the boss, and you are allowing and asking them things that will help you to get the job done. And that's what it is when we start talking about praying consistently. We are praying to the Lord that he will uh, intercede on our behalf. We're praying earnestly that God will give us the desire of our heart to have the kind of change that we so, yeah, that we so uh, vehemently uh, need in our, our lives. Excuse me. <clears throat> and so let's look at Colossians 4. And two, <coughs> Colossians four and two. <clears throat> Colossians four and two. It says, uh, "He says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful." He says. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. In the Greek, in the Greek, that word means to be courageously persistent. To be courageously persistent. I like that. Courageously persistent. I and I was thinking about that thing because I'm saying, okay, 
courageously persistent, meaning that, that we've got to courageously pray um, that God would deliver us into the areas of success that we are looking for, no matter what it looks like. <laughs> I wish I had a witness here. Uh, courageously persistent, it, that, that even though it looks afar off, what I desire of God, my change uh, it is a far off because I've got to change some things physically. I've got to change some things within my circle. I've got to change some things spiritually. And I'm just working one moment, one instant at a time. And even before my physical, my physical uh, deliverance may come, uh, that change may come. My mental is already working. My spirit is already working. And so I'm praying courageously, persistently, because even though I don't have it yet, I know that there's some things that are beginning to change in the inner me. And so God says, you've got to pray and be courageously persistent. I need to tell somebody tonight, listen, I know you're not where you want to be. I know you still got a little ways to go, but don't give up in doing well because God is going to answer your prayer. He is going to deliver you. Uh, when we go, uh, listen, let's, let's move uh, 1 Peter 5 and 7. 5 and 7. In that text, uh he tells us he says now remember we're talking about prayer he says uh cast your burdens upon the lord because he cares for you i like that because what that means and and you get the the picture the connotation of throwing something on something in other words like you throw a blanket on the donkey before you ride it the christian must cast our cares on jesus because he knows what he's doing with our lives. <laughs> Come on, somebody who's struggling right now and God is asking you to do something that you really don't want to do in order to change your life for the better. God is calling you uh, to mend some fences. God is calling you, uh, yes, to, to do something that you have been procrastinating in doing uh, for your betterment. He says you got to cast your cares on God because he cares for you and God will never lead you to a place uh, where you will not be fulfilled in what he has desire for you to do. He says you got to cast it on him because he knows what he's doing with your life. If God is calling you to do it, even if it is heavy, if it seems like a burden, he said, no, take that burden off of you and put it on me because I know what I'm doing with your life. Brothers and sisters, come on. God is looking for change. And, 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 and the last text, uh, scripture that I want to look at, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And I know you all know this one very well. Uh, Philippians 4, uh, 6, and 7. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. This is the last one. We, we're out of time. Um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Look at what he says. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the, the, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, he said, um, don't fret. Don't worry. Because when you do that, it looks like it's a lack of trust in God. No, what you really ought to do is you ought to pray. And you cannot pray to a loving God. You cannot pray to a God who provides without having some gratitude in your prayers. You know, oh, we can't go to God. Oh, woe is me, Lord. Here I am again. I've been doing my best and, 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 and I can't get ahead and I've been trying. No, 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 no. No, we've got to go to God recognizing that, that God doesn't want us to be anxious. we got to go to God professing. You remember I started talking tonight about confessing. you got to go to God confessing, Lord, I haven't made it yet, but I'm striving. I'm, I'm reaching towards the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. you got to go to God praying and believing and confessing. Oh, Lord, I don't have the blessing yet, but I know it's on the way. I don't have, yeah, I don't have the job yet, but I know it's on the way. I'm not able to sit down at the table across from them who I've been uh, dealing with 
uh, yeah, in a negative yet, but Lord, I can be in the same room with him. Lord, I don't have everything yet, but I'm on my way. Lord, uh, the disease is in my body, and but I feel good today. I don't have the healing yet, but I'm on my way. You got to begin to speak those things that are not as though they were and watch what God will do with your life. If you want change, you've got to begin to pray and pray regularly. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this moment that we've shared together. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for all that you're doing in the midst of your people. We pray tonight, God, that you would give us a prayer life. Lord, wherever we are, God, whenever your spirit, ah, uh, yeah, awakens our spirit, let us lift up words of thanksgiving to you. And then, God, let us set aside time, whether it be early in the morning or late at night, where we'll speak to you about our day's journey, where we'll talk to you about those things that are hard that, that we need to deal with. Lord, help us to confess our sins to you, our shortcomings, that you might deliver us from our own past, that you might forgive us, God, and let us feel as though we're forgiven, and that we might move out freely to secure our futures. We bless you now in the name of Jesus, for you are God over everything, and in everything we give you praise. It is in your name we pray. Hallelujah and amen, amen, amen. Listen, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. I pray that something was said or done that will help you in your life's journey on your way to receiving the change that you desire. I thank you, uh, and I know that the Lord knows exactly what we stand in need of. Good to see you tonight, Deacon Edmund. I pray God's blessings continually on you as well. Listen, I want to remind you, remind you, on next Saturday, July the 16th, 11 a.m., really important, uh, the Kidney Foundation will be on our campus at 153 Lawton Street, uh, along with uh, our our community service effort as we will distribute food. We want to make sure that we get the word out. We want to serve 250 families on Saturday, July the 16th, beginning at 11 a.m. Also, come and get your kidney screening. You need your kidney screening. Many of us are, are lax when it comes to having uh, being diagnosed with, with uh, issues with our kidney because we don't get screening. And so come out and get screened so that you'll know where you are and uh, if there's any dietary issues that you need to begin to make uh, uh, changes with. I'll tell you, I need to drink more water. I know that. And so uh, I can only imagine that that's what they're going to tell me. But I'm going to get screened uh, because I want to know where I am. And I hope that you'll do the same uh, July the 16th, 11 a.m., 153 Lawton Street, San Antonio, Texas, 78237. Come on out. If you need more information, call our office, 210-436-7296. And listen, because I know I need to change my life, look, I got it I got it in my hand, and I'm trying to do better. I'm praying, Lord, uh, you know what's going to come up against me. And so I'm trying to mark it down. And so do your best uh, to receive the change that you desire. And I know that God can and God will do what no other God can do. All right. Listen, God bless you and keep you is our prayer. We will see you on Sunday, 10 a.m. as we lift up the name of the Lord. Remember this, my brothers and my sisters, if you go in peace or no, if you go in faith, God will respond in